All right, so Jacob Castro joined today by Aaron Jeffrey. Uh, he just came off his big win over Austin Vanderford this past weekend. Like we talked about before the fight, he took the fight on eight days' notice. And, uh, yeah, he got the job done. So just want to chat with Aaron afterwards and see how everything's going. It's good. It's good. Things are good. Um, it's been a crazy, busy couple of weeks. It has. It has. And, like, uh, we were just talking about it. It's really hectic, and it sounds like you're over here with family right now. But how was that whole fight week? Was it hectic at all, or did you deal with it really easily? Uh, it was definitely hectic, but uh, things went smooth. Like, the, the travel and everything is uh, – is always a little bit stressful, um, but that was smooth. Fight week was smooth. Like there was no bumps in the road, really, man. So uh, it was good. Um, and I'm I'm a pretty even keel guy. Um, maybe that is part of that is like fake it till you make it, and I kind of act low stress, and then uh, it, that kind of comes with it. But uh, no, it was it was good. It was busy, but it was pretty good. Yeah. Do you just kind of like? I guess suppress it a little bit is what you're saying. Like if you're feeling stressed, you won't um, portray it to like the people you're around. You just kind of try to keep it to yourself and like suppress it. Exactly. That's exactly it. Okay. And um, so before the fight too, you were talking about how you wanted to kind of shut down his wrestling and then looking to make him quit in there. Right. Um, and that's kind of exactly what happened, but it happened in like a minute and a half. So um are you happy that it took only a minute and a half or were you looking to fight a little bit more in there? Uh, I mean, we don't get paid by the hour, right? Yeah. So the, the shorter, the better. I mean, if it ended in 30 seconds, that would have been great too. I, I did want to test myself against him a little bit. I wanted to see if I could hang with him in the wrestling and kind of prove some people wrong that I could. Um, but again, we, we don't get paid by the hour. So to get a quick finish like that is, is always a good thing. Yeah, it is. And um, I asked that just because after the fight, I saw you saying um, in like a little clip Bellator posted, you're like, dang, man, I didn't get to test myself for anything. Um, but I guess in hindsight, this opens the opportunity for you to test yourself even further because you can take another fight because um, you're not dinged up or anything. And um, so, yeah, maybe you can test yourself by taking another fight within the next few months. Quick turnaround. Yeah, man, for sure. Uh, I think they have a card. Uh, at the end of October in Long Beach, I've been told. And then there's one in December. I think it might be in Connecticut again. So uh, both those dates sound decent to me. Maybe we can bang out two more this year. Yeah, bro. I was going to um, – that's like two things I was going to mention because I go to uh, Long Beach State. Um, so, bro, I would love to have you uh, go to that fight. Great. I'd go there for sure. And then um, what's it called? I was going to ask how many more fights you wanted at – uh, by the end of the year so it sounds like you want to do two fights yeah one one will be good i'll be pretty happy with one because that'll make four fights this year but man if we get uh two fights in and make it a five fight year that'd be pretty cool too yeah and then um because i heard you say it at the end of october but i think let me look it up real quick because i think uh it's yeah, on, like know, october somewhere... first oh it's the beginning of october okay yeah, yeah someone said it to me in an interview i wasn't wasn't uh exactly sure yeah, I believe it's um I'm trying to find it real quick. I heard that after the press conference. So yeah, October first. Is that like a little bit too early or is that still somewhat um, doable? It's a little bit soon. That that would make like three fights in not even three months, I think, yeah. right? That'd be kind of crazy. But uh I don't know. Uh I, I told my my management just leave me alone this week. I don't wanna I don't want to be watching tape. I don't want to be talking to opponents. I'm going to chill just for the remainder of this week. And then next week we'll talk. So, uh, yeah, we'll see how I feel and see what the options are. Gotcha. Gotcha. I was thinking that because um, you got your number six ranking. So I was thinking you got to have a top 10 opponent, right? Do you for think sure. that maybe they will give you the guy above you or the guy behind you since they just gave you like a big opportunity? What do you think is more? Yeah. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know what the, what the play is with me. It's a weird situation, right? Because I was unranked. I, I just had my debut, and now I'm, like, right in the middle of the top 10. Um, so, yeah, I don't know what Bellator's move with me is going to be. But, yeah, like I said, we'll, we'll probably find out here pretty soon. Yeah, and um, I just want to get your thoughts on that ranking because uh, Austin was the number two guy. There was questions on, like, where you were going to get placed. Are you happy with the number six ranking? Dude, I'm, yeah, for sure. I'm happy to be in the top 10 at all. Um, again, I've only had two fights there. I just came off my debut, so to be in the top 10 already is crazy. Um, it's kind of what I expected. I said in a couple interviews, I said, I don't know if I'll be number two or they're going to slot me in somewhere like number five or number six. That's kind of what I was thinking. And, uh, yeah, that's where I am. Okay, for sure. And I guess, like, 
because when you signed with Bellator, obviously you're, you're going to have intentions of being the champion. Um, but like, ideally when you first signed, how long did you think that may like take you to get there? Or do you not even think that far ahead? I don't really think that far ahead. Um, I was thinking I was going to have like two, not easy fights, but two like kind of build me up type of fights, get me on the radar of some people, then start getting big names. Um, and the, the first guy I fought, he wasn't a big name guy. I don't think he's super well known, but he was 18 and two Brazilian guy, uh, BJJ black belt. So that wasn't exactly an easy fight. And then I fought number two. So, uh, yeah, it wasn't exactly what I expected, but things worked out pretty well. Yeah. And I mean, you're pretty tested too. So I think that, um, maybe they saw that in you and they didn't really think that you need that big push. Cause I think you've been looking to get these big fights for a while. So, uh, maybe just like between you and Bellator, you guys are on the same page with that. Um, sure. but you also got that Joe Rogan follow after the fight. I saw that. <laughs> Congrats yeah, on that. Crazy. He messaged me too. No way. Yeah. I, I messaged him. I said like, Joe Rogan, you're the man. What a fucking honor. And he said, uh, my pleasure. Congrats on the win last night. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. You know, I saw yeah. a lot of hype, like, um, a couple of the MMA pages that just posted like the fact that you won, um, specifically actually MMA Island. Uh, you mm -hmm. got like, like around, when it first happened, I saw like 5,000 likes on there. And then, wow. uh, yeah, I looked at um, the guy who won the main event and there was like, I think less than a thousand. So I was like, damn, there's something going on. Um, a lot of people were following you and Joe Rogan saw you and stuff. So oh, me, I'm going on uh, Ariel's show today. Dude, I was going to ask. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. yeah Congrats. Man, crazy, crazy. Because uh, you guys are both Canadian. So I've been wondering, yeah. like, dude, they need to get you on there. Yeah, man, like I said, it's been a wild couple weeks because so this Monday would be two weeks since I heard about the fight. So it's not even been two weeks. And yeah, I just fought number two in the world. Got Joe Rogan following me going on aerial show today. Got ranked, um, maybe renegotiate the contract like things have changed very quickly. Yeah, they have. Huh? Um, and so you're saying it's all going crazy right now. Um, you're looking to resign a new contract, possibly going on aerial show and whatnot. Um but like, so you would for sure say there is more of a buzz after this fight, like after this win than any other fight you've had. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. How is that I like, cause I hear about like it, what's the feeling? Um, sorry, say it again. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off either, but I was just yeah. curious, like what the feeling is like, cause they talk about there being a buzz and stuff like that. And it's hard to come down almost like a drug and whatnot. Yeah. It's very surreal, man. Um, I don't know. It's 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 just weird. I don't know how to describe it. I really just feel like uh, I don't know. People are just constantly like uh, chattering about you, even when you're just like hanging out doing your own thing. You just feel like something in the background. Yeah, almost. my phone is just blowing up constantly too. Like every time I go on Instagram, it's like so many messages I can't keep up. So uh, I I try and get. I, I like to get back to like friends and family and fans and everyone that messages me, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep up with it. Yeah, that's coming to an end shortly, huh? I, I think so, yeah, because yeah. it's like a full-time job. Like, my girl's getting pissed at me. She's like, you're on your phone too much. Get off. I'm like, I even thought about that, too, a little bit, because you are good at it, and I have a girlfriend, too, so I know how that goes sometimes, where it's like, hey, yeah, just, like, hang out with us yeah. for a little bit. Yeah, I got to uh, prioritize some things. Yeah, well, you have a management team, right? So they're And they got you the uh, aerial interview, I'm assuming, so I guess they'll handle some other things. Yeah, for sure. So I noticed that you're always like eating a bunch of like veggies and stuff like that with your food. And um, like, is that kind of like the secret to being um, like in good shape year round is kind of substituting your veggies with like some other like breads or like rice and stuff? Um, I mean, I wouldn't call it a secret. I, I think most people know that they should eat their veggies. I, I don't think that's like the key thing. Um, I don't know. Maybe it is. Yeah, I think you got to eat your fruits and veggies um and you gotta like eat the right amount of calories obviously um and just not eat shitty food man <laughs> i mean it's so simple like i do this nutrition consulting gig on the side and like i barely make any money with it and i think it's because i i'm not i'm not trying to fluff things up and, and make it sound fancier than it is because it's there's like nothing special to it it's like eat your fruits and veggies get some protein in, eat the right amount of calories and and train and mm -hmm. that doesn't exactly sell diet plans. People want to hear like some crazy shit. Like I have some secret diet they've never heard of before. I kind of feel that because I basically do the same thing and you don't really even need to think too hard, right? You just kind of like 
I don't know, my brain almost tells me what I should eat, but I just noticed that you eat a lot of like simple carbohydrates, maybe eggs and stuff, but I don't see too much. Um, Maybe I, I just miss it, but I don't see too much like as much chicken or like steak too often. Do you not eat that? Like uh, when do you eat that? Like all the time? Or Yeah, that's primarily because I'm lazy and eggs take like two minutes to cook. Um, I eat red meat probably once a meat or once a week, uh, chicken a couple times a week and then maybe fish one or two times a week. Okay. But it's kind of like, I mean, I can deal or relate to that too. Cause I live on my own. So a lot of times I'm just making eggs and stuff Yeah. every now and then I'll get the energy to like defrost the chicken and like cut it up and stuff. So, um, how do you do that? Do you buy it like the day of, or do you kind of, um, like keep it stored and then you uh, defrost it and whatnot? Um, chicken, I, uh, often buy those rotisserie chickens and just oh, nice. eat that. That's crazy. And I don't like cooking. Uh, and I go see my mom every weekend and she cooks so much and she lives by herself. Uh, and she'll cook enough food for like 10 people and then just leave the leftovers in the fridge until they go bad. So I'll often come back to her place and just steal a bunch of her food. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, that's, that's how I do my cooking. I just steal it from my mom. Okay. Nice. It's good to rely on. Is she uh, yeah. nearby or like, uh, she's like west? two hours from where I live. I'm near Niagara Falls, and then she's like uh, two hours west in like a pretty rural area. Okay. And um, so I got a, a good one for you. After the fight, like a lot of people were commenting on the post saying like, uh, you look like Don Fry with the mustache. Yeah. <laughs> like, hoping it was like yeah. a homage to him. Did you see anything like that? I also saw people saying you look like Chael Sonnen. Yeah, I get Chael Sonnen, I get Don Fry, I get uh, Justin Trudeau. I don't know if you saw that post that I made the other day. Uh, someone, I don't think so. Someone was like, I've had this unwarranted hate for you for so long, and I just figured out why. And they posted a picture of me beside Justin Trudeau. <laughs> I used I to get it more. Before I had a mustache and a mullet, I got Justin Trudeau a lot. Okay. Um, Who Justin is he? For, uh, he's the prime minister of Canada, like the oh. equivalent of a president. Yeah, like the leader of our country. For sure. Um, and everyone hates him. <laughs> um, and then there's this dude that Dustin Poirier trains with, uh, Pablito. I think his name's like Cody Barrett. I don't know if you know who that is. I don't. But I he's, don't. He's got a big mullet and a mustache, too, so we get compared a lot. That's hilarious. Um, did you make any friends with those dudes? Uh, Pat Downey and I think one other guy who had a mullet at the card? You get yeah, to talk so to them the, at all? The one the one guy trains at Sanford, uh, and I'm boys with a lot of those guys. So I met him. He's cool. And then, yeah, Pat Downey, man, that guy's jokes. He was uh, he was a character on Fight Week, so that was pretty cool uh, seeing how he was. Um, yeah, I, I like him a lot. I'm, I'm a Pat Downey fan now for sure. Yeah, I am too. I just like people who kind of like uh, go crazy like that because I can't yeah. really do that myself. So I admire no, it. No. No fucks given by Pat Downey at all. It's awesome. Yeah, not at all. Um, so a little bit off topic, but I wanted to ask, um, just kind of going back a little bit. After your win, I saw that you posted about like Kayo, um, Sean Brady, and um, Brendan Allen. They're all showing you love. Um, where do you think you get the support from within the community? Like, I don't see a lot of fighters banding um, together like that and like supporting a guy, but I kind of see that a lot with you um i i've said this a few times before i think what has gotten me further in this sport than like being a good fighter is uh being a good person and i've talked to these guys uh i trained with kayo right after we fought uh, i tried to hook him up with some gyms in vegas uh, i just met brendan allen recently down in florida I trained with him we chilled a bunch me and sean brady have spoke a bunch over the years um so yeah i, I think it's just uh being a good person man as cheesy as that sounds no, um, I hear you completely. And I think it's even like a little deeper than that, like, because it's hard not to be bitter, you know, but um, did you have to teach yourself that? Or is that just like a characteristic that you kind of have? I don't know. I yeah, I think it's just a characteristic that I have. And I've always kind of like questioned myself for it. Like, do I not want this enough? Like, maybe I should be pissed at these guys. But uh, no, it's a sport, man. And, and somebody has got to lose. And like, unfortunately, it was me on those events. But uh no, I, I don't see any reason to be bitter or angry at these guys. Yeah, I mean, even more cheesy, right? They'll be like, uh, don't be bitter, just be better. So you just try to better yeah. yourself instead. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sometimes that moment in your career where you feel like, is it worth it to keep going or not? And then you're just like, you know what? Like, I don't really care. Like, this is my passion and I'm going to keep going. Um, and then that's when everything turns around for them, right? Do you feel like that maybe happened with your career? Because like, 
um, from an outside perspective, it looks like that. It looks like um, after that one contender series fight, you had a rough go, but and it may not have been worth it to you. You can answer that, though. And then you kind of um, were like, you know, what? I'm going to keep pushing. And now look at all the success you've been having like over the past year. Yeah, it's hard to say, man. I mean, everything progresses like slowly. Like it's hard to like look at your career and pick like a certain moment where things change because it, it happens so like progressively over time. Um, so I don't know. I don't really know uh, what the moment was. It's It's very hard to say. For sure. So, I mean, I was just wondering if like you felt like a big gust of momentum, like in the last year compared to other things. But do you think maybe it's like you've been building yourself all these past years? So like when you do get this momentum now, it's kind of like expected in a way. Yeah. So right now it feels like things that I've been working for for like 10 years are finally happening. And I didn't really expect it to happen like these last couple of weeks. Things blew up very quickly. Um, but yeah, I've been working towards this for 10, 10 or 12 years of my life. And now it all happened very suddenly. It, it usually for most guys, it kind of, it builds up slowly. Um, but no, it's, it's been a long time coming. It feels like. Yeah, for sure. And, um, yeah, it's just good to see that you're getting the respect you, uh, deserve, like I said, last time and that you're capitalizing on it and like making the most of these moments. Cause I know you've been, um, putting a lot of pressure on yourself probably to like really get the job done this time around. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Um, so just want to like wrap it up with a couple like fun ones, I guess. Uh, number one, though, because I messaged you about this. You talk about creatine on uh, your nutrition page as well. I learned a lot about it from you, um, but maybe just for the audience, like what are some of the benefits of it and why do you like to incorporate it in your training? Yeah, man, uh, there's tons of research on it. It seems like it's almost good for everything. If you look at my Jeffrey nutrition page, uh, a couple posts recently on it, um, one of the main reasons I take it is for brain health. Like they study it now for uh, um, not brain damage, but like brain, brain injury and re recovery from like traumatic brain incidents. So that, that's the main reason, obviously, as a fighter, we're getting punched in the head a lot. And I want to mitigate those effects as much as possible. Um, it's good for your muscles. Obviously, that's why a, a lot of people take it. Uh, it's good for your bones. It's good for your eyes. Um, some research that it could be good for your testicles um i don't know oh, there's yeah. research for like cancer and depression and anxiety and just like so much stuff man so uh it's a very interesting supplement yeah um and i've been like i just got on it probably like last week because i've been seeing your posts um and i've been telling my friends too about it but one of the most things that i like like about it a lot is the um how it's anti-carcinogenic like yeah. fighting cancer um yeah it was super Crazy, interesting right? to me. yeah that's yeah. insane um yeah. does it help with like like um brain function like you know how joe rogan likes to take some of those things that um helps with his speech delivery and whatnot mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. before events Do, is that what you're talking about too uh yeah i think so they i know they they study it in older people for sure for like cognitive tasks um and again they they've studied it in depression anxiety so uh yeah it definitely seems like it's having some good effects on the brain okay gotcha and then do you take it like before your workouts after or when do you take it uh it builds up in your system over time it like saturates in the system so the timing doesn't really matter as long as you're taking uh like a, a high enough dose like three or five grams daily um you can even mi miss a couple days here and there but uh no the, the timing is not really super important okay gotcha and then um uh, we'll wrap it up really quickly here but um do you take it like about that. The no, you're good i feel bad because i know you're hanging out with your family it's all good man it's all good um do you take it like every single day because you say it builds up so is it something like on your off day you would take as well uh yeah like i said too it's building up so like missing a few days here and there uh isn't really an issue um uh, but yeah i take it pretty much every day kind of random times whenever i remember okay and like i don't know if it's just me like the placebo effect but i swear i feel like a difference like like within like the first 10 or 15 minutes that i first took it like do you uh, feel that way too after you started taking it or what? I don't. And even if it is placebo, it doesn't matter. If you feel better, that's the important thing, right? Yes, that is the important thing. You got to do that stuff as well. Um, so, okay. So about this weekend's fight card, I'm pretty excited about um, Paolo Costa versus Luke Rockhold. I don't know if you are, but um, I saw a meme earlier this morning where they were saying like, this is like the two high school jocks. Yeah. <laughs> and like meeting up uh, after like school to fight in the locker yeah. room. Uh, yeah. How do you kind of see this fight playing out? Um, just who do you like in the fight and whatnot like that? 
Uh, I like them both, dude. Paulo Costa is hilarious recently on social media. Eh? I, I'm starting to like him a lot more. Um, I don't know, man. Luke's been off for a long time. That's a tough fight for him. And he's looked chinny and not great recently. So, uh, I don't know. I, I like to see Luke perform well because I like him. But mm -hmm. uh, we'll Yeah, I was re-watching the Costa fight with uh, Romero. And as much as I like him, I think you can tell I like him because I post him a lot on the page. I might be making you like him more now because you said that. Yeah, for um, sure. But uh, I noticed, dude, he he kind of is like, he's a little wild. And then you hear um, Rockhold uh, pre-fight. He's kind of talking like he's looking to kind of pick him off and like snipe him a little bit. So mm -hmm. it, it's a good matchup. I think it should be a really uh, fun fight. I agree. Yeah, I'm, I didn't even realize that was this weekend, to be honest. I'm, I'm pumped for that. Yeah. Um. So you're going to watch that for sure then? Absolutely. And then last one, um, Usman versus Edwards. I think a lot of people are picking Usman, but it's hard to keep that title reign going for a long time. So I think with every fight, it's just like every time he gets a win now, it's that much more impressive. But how are you looking at this fight? Yeah, uh, I think he's the best in the division right now. I think he can hold the belt for a long time. Um, but yeah, like you said, man, every time he does it, it's a little bit more impressive and all the champs fall at one point. So uh it could be it could be this time. I don't think it will be, but you never know. Yeah. And um, so I just thought of one last one and we'll end on this. But I also want to ask you, like, so with your team and everything, I noticed that you have like a good group of people around you who um, essentially just care a lot about you. And like you took this fight on eight days notice and you had your whole corner with you. I think that like probably a lot of fighters wouldn't have that because sometimes when you're at a gym, there's a lot of people and uh, a coach might be committed with someone else. So um how does like having a team uh better your career do you think it really helps you um compared to like i don't know maybe early in your career where you didn't have these coaches yeah for sure uh i've been with these guys since since the beginning since i like only had a few pro fights uh and like we've we've grown together i've watched them go through a lot of shit they've watched me go through a lot of shit um and we've kind of been on this journey together and we have like loyalty to each other not to mention they're like technically very great coaches obviously that's probably the most important part but uh yeah we're like brothers man so it's pretty awesome yeah it is and um it's good to see that like you are able to get your corner there on eight days notice because i've seen other fighters recently they take a fight and uh their corner can't come so do, do you take precedent like in that case does someone else miss out or um what, how does that go well fortunately this time there was nobody else fighting um but yeah, I, I think there's been times where I'm fighting the same night as some other guys and I'm I'm like, uh, how am I going to put it? Like the highest ranked guy at the gym, I guess. Like mm -hmm. uh, I'm the most advanced in my career. So yeah, there, there will be some times and there has been some times that they're going to choose me over like an amateur fighter or like a lower level pro. Yeah, that makes sense. And so you would recommend though, like having a nice team around you, right? Because without that support, I'm sure like a fight week, like you just went through would be a lot more difficult. For sure, but it's like it's not something you can just force or just go out and find find the team, right? Like it happens yeah. very organically for me, and I'm sure it does for other guys too. But some guys maybe not. Yeah, no, I hear you, and that's something that's probably like a hard thing to kind of nail down. But you see a lot of fighters like throughout their career struggling with it. I think even Tony Ferguson's switching around trying to find like a place where he's like yeah. the top dog, the priority and stuff. So it's probably for hard sure. to kind of like get that nailed down. But yeah, for sure. All right, bro. Well, I'll let you go. Um, enjoy time with your family. And thanks for taking the time. Um, maybe I can get your number uh, shortly. That way, uh, you know, I won't be blocked out of Instagram with all the other people reaching for out. Sure. To yeah, I think that's a good idea. Okay. <laughs> I'll send you a message right now and try to get your number, bro. But congrats thanks. again. And uh, you, have man. a good one. Later, brother. Appreciate you.